Hello and welcome to Wally Bois. Well, have you ever had that scenario when you're trying to do some cross-cutting on your table saw? And it nearly removes your digits. Oh, that just won't do. So let me just show you how to cross-cut on your table saw without losing your digit. I want to keep mine, don't you? Well, let me show you what I mean. But first of all, I want to kind of explain why it happens in the first place. When you try and cross cut a piece of timber, such as this piece, against the fence and your circular saw blade. So there you are. You've measured your distance here with your tape measure. Oh, I'm happy with that. That's the right length for my piece of timber. I'm about to cut. And what happens? You get part way through and because you're failing to hold this 100% perpendicular to the fence. And it does that. Oh, but why is that a problem? You've already cut your piece of wood. The problem is, it's because from corner to corner is longer than its length. Oh, so it jams against the blade. And then it... Oh, that ain't good. And it can ride over the top of the blade. And then whack you in the stomach. Actually, that hurt. Ouch. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. I need some cream on that now. But I mean, anyway, so that's what happens. And you don't want that to happen. So you think to yourself, I oh, know, I'll just use a cross-cutting sledge. Like this little one here for 90 degrees. I put that on here like so. I've set my fence to length. I've got it on here like that. But it's, well, it's better than it was before. It's safer. But still, it can jam up and do that again. And then throw that across at you. And the point you end will stab you in the belly. That just won't do. No. So there is another little measure that you can take that stops that from happening. Or at least it helps a great deal. First of all, be sure that your blade that you're going to be cutting with is just above the width of your piece of timber and use a cross-cutting sledge like this one. Really important. Very simple it is. All this one is, well in this case, a piece of chipboard, a bit of particle board. And it has a piece of timber on the bottom that fits in the slot and a fence to the back. That is your first step. It does make things a lot safer. But there's that other thing you can do that I did say you could do. Yes, you got another piece of wood. Oh, so move this out the way. You grab your fence, you bring it a bit closer to your circular floor blade, and you lie down, and you want this piece of wood to be just past the start of the blade. It's about there, we'll do. Okay, now what do I do with it? Oh, I remember you want to use a clamp. In this case, I'm using a quick release clamp. It's one of, um, well, Oh, I think it's Leroy Merlin's, the Dexter. But you get a wolf one or something like that, are far better. It doesn't really matter, to be honest. As long as you can hold that piece of timber on that fence like so. It could be the other way up, if you like. I prefer it that way because it gives me more free space. And I'll explain it in a moment. So there we go. We bring that over. So the distance from here to the blade is however long we want this piece of wood to be. And I just want to remove the 45 degree. So let's bring that over. Oh, we're going over we are to there. That'll do. I'm happy at that. And then we use our sledge again. For our 90 degrees. But this is now our stop. It's kind of like our fence. So we slide that piece of wood against that stop. And now as we pass through the blade, Oh, tell you what, let's show you. Oh, oh no, that looks scary. Don't touch that round thing that's spinning around really fast. As you can see, there's no guards. Your machine will have a guard, I hope. But for the purpose of the video, I want you to be able to see what's going on. Yes. So now all I do now, I can bring the sledge forwards and make my cut. Just like so. I've got part way through and now I can move this piece of wood away from the blade, making it safe. 
Oh, and turn the blade off, turn the motor off, the saw off. You know, stop a wreck. Or get yourself one of those new saw stop table saws. And touch the blade with your finger and it'll just disappear into the top of the table. Yes, that is a thing. But I don't recommend it, no. Because you want to keep your digits. Still cut you. Mm, just not as bad. So yes, that is how I would do a cross cut using a table saw. Simples, isn't it? And all this stuff, you can make it yourself for your table saw. Definitely make one of these, whatever you do, because they're just so flipping useful. Especially if you've got, if you have not got a chop saw. And then you've got the benefit of all these different blades you can use. It's such a great tool. So there you go. How about that? I think it's a good plan. So that's what I do if I want to safely cross cut a piece of timber using the old table saw. And for some people, a table saw might be all you need. You might not need a chop saw. And if you've got a small workshop, that is the machine you should be getting. Yeah, do all sorts with it. Anyway, don't forget to click like and subscribe and maybe that little bell icon. Because then you get a warm, fussy feeling in your pocket every time I upload another video. And I hope you'll be excited about that. Oh, okay. Ta-ta.